This screencast is on GDP. In the screencast, we are going to look at what is counted and not counted in GDP, the formula for GDP, and um, the difference between real and nominal GDP. And while we're doing that, we'll also look at the formula of how to calculate real GDP. So when we're looking at what is counted in GDP, this formula here, the expenditures approach of C plus I plus G plus exports minus imports, or XN is another way your workbook uses. Um, this formula is really important for GDP. And so when we talk about the different components here of consumption, investment, government spending, and the net exports, you can see here the list of different things that fall into it. So when we're talking about consumption, we're talking about those durable and non-durable goods. Remember, durable goods are goods that last for at least three years. And then also the services. When we look here at I, um, this I think is the hardest category. These are different investments that businesses have. And so this is where we're looking at things like um, capital goods like machinery and those type of things where you're using them to produce multiple components or multiple products instead of just one machinery makes one good. Um, and then remember that residential and the housing falls into the investment category. So that one is really important um, and putting it there. When we're talking about the exports and the imports, it can be goods and services, and imports are actually subtracted out of GDP. And then finally, you have the government spending, and um, these are just some of the different things that go with it, national defense and then everything else where the government is spending. So especially when we get into what can we do during the contractionary phase of the business cycle, sometimes you'll see that government spending component of GDP really rise because that can create jobs where businesses aren't employing people. But what you also need to recognize instead of just what is part of GDP, you'll have questions about what's not counted in GDP. So when you look at the different things, financial transactions like stocks and bonds, think of a bond like an IOU where you're giving money to the government and saying, hey, keep that money for 30 years, and then after 30 years the government is going to give you back interest on that. Um, there's nothing produced when you buy stocks and bonds, and so therefore that's not a part of GDP. Intermediate goods, these would be those input goods. Those would be things that would go into making a product. Um, a great example is with the cars, the tires that go on the cars. They're not counted because the tires are counted in the final cost of when the car is sold. So that would not be part of it. Um, used goods, you remember GDP is the final goods and services. These have already been counted in GDP the initial time that they were sold. The inputs, those would fall again with the intermediate goods. And a lot of times people will confuse that with um, investments. And so that's where if it's something that is a component of the final product, that would be then an input and it would not be counted in it. Um, foreign produced goods and services, gross domestic product means that these are things that are produced within the United States, and so we're not looking at things that are produced outside of the United States. And then lastly, government transfer payments. Those would be like welfare or Social Security or Medicare. Those type of money transactions, no actual product is being created or bought. So when you're calculating GDP, there are different ways that you can add it up, and this is taken from your book. Um, but again, the formula to really know is the expenditure. When you're looking at the factors payment, what we're looking at there is the land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurability, the, part, the, um, the way that they're distributed, which in the end is the same thing as when you're looking at the C plus I plus G plus XN amount, it's just a different way of calculating it. So um, you can do it either way, but the, this is the one that gets utilized the most. And then when you're looking at the value added, 
what goes on with that is what is just the additional thing, the new thing that gets added on. Because all of these factor payments are considered um, intermediate goods, so they're not counted as part of GDP. So lastly here, we need to look at the difference between real and nominal GDP. When we're talking about real GDP, we're talking about it being adjusted for inflation. Take a look here at the ticket sales. This is for movie sales. And when you're looking here at what movie brought in the most money, if you don't adjust it for GDP here, it would look like Titanic would be the one that brought in the most amount. However, when you're looking at it adjusted for GDP, or adjusted for inflation, what you can see is that Gone with the Wind is the one who actually had the most ticket sales. Because in 1939, ticket sales were 23 cents a ticket. And in 1997, with Titanic, the ticket sales were $4.59. And so when you're looking at the unadjusted, you don't have to sell as many at $4.59 to be able to beat the amount that was brought in when the tickets were sold for $0.23. Cents. But if you make all of these adjusted so that they go, and I don't, they don't say what the base year is, but if we were adjusting it with the base year, then you would see that um, the amount would be the same ticket price when you're um, comparing it and you're just then looking at the number of tickets sold. And obviously the number of tickets sold was much larger for Gone with the Wind than it was for any of these other movies. Um, so when we look at the formula here for real GDP, one of the ways to remember it is that you're using whatever the current year's quantity is of the consum consumer goods, for example, times the price of the base year that everybody will use. And then you add up the different components that go into it. So if this was consumption and this was government spending, and then if you had another one for investment and another one for net exports, you would be using the different quantities that would go along with it, but you would always have the same base price of that component for um, all of the different ones. So it's really about the quantity when you're looking at real GDP. Nominal GDP, that would be the unadjusted here, because that just means the number based upon with the at price of that given year.